Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. This is Scott Ferguson, and I have, this sounds so cliche, I haven't really said it too much before, but I had this kind of a bated breath interview. Uh, there's certain podcasts out there that I push play on, you know, every time. And my, my friend here, Nick Loper's uh, Side Hustle Nation podcast is something that's absolutely fantastic. I give, it's given me ideas to pass on to my clients that are looking to do something on, on the side and maybe bring in some income. And, and again, his name's Nick Loper, and he helps people earn money outside of their day job. He's an author of a bazillion books, it seems like. If you go to his Amazon page, which I'll put in the show notes, he's got a bunch of books, and there will be a free book giveaway at the end, so make sure you listen. And he, again, he's an author, online en- entrepreneur, and host of the award-winning Side Hustle Show podcast which features new part-time business ideas each week. As chief side hustler at SideHustleNation.com, he loves deconstructing the tactics and strategies behind building in- extra income streams. And Nick, I'm so blessed. Thank you for so much for coming on. Please introduce yourself to the Time to Shine Today podcast, Varsity Squad. But first, what's your favorite color and why? Favorite color, green. Green, uh, that's that, really? Why? Uh, I just, that reminds me of nature camping hiking as a kid um looking out even as as built up as this area suburban seattle has become you can still go out in the middle of the lake and look up at the hills and they're still green all year round love it it's like side hustling can almost be like a rebirth which kind of coordinates with green right (laughs) a little bit in sense but you know also if you caught a caught a fish over at pikes was it pikes Pike's, oh, Pike Place. Uh, yeah, I haven't Pike's, done it. Um, I've, yeah, I've, I've seen, it. I've seen people fun. do it. It's kind of yeah, fun. I mean, I got my video of me catching it. First try, nice. too. It was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Good times. Good times. So, Nick, before we kind of dig in to the, the podcast and what you do for people to earn a, that side income, can you give us a little background of kind of where you started and worked your way up the ranks and started to thrive helping others? Yes, yeah, so my original side hustle was started even uh, kind of before graduation. It was a what morphed into a comparison shopping site for footwear, where we pull in the catalogs from Zappos and Amazon and you know all these other uh, footwear retailers. And we would uh, tell you where you can find the best price on your next pair of shoes and all these cool like uh, product level coupon integrations that would bake into the price. And uh, we'd earn affiliate commission on um, on any sale that was generated through the site. So that was my um, original side hustle. That was like three years, nights and weekends while working corporate to get right. up to the point where I you know, felt comfortable giving my notice at work, ran that for several more years, started a bunch of projects on the side. Most of those projects for full disclosure were, you know, abysmal failures. A couple of them that stuck around. One of those was um, the Side Hustle Show podcast and the Side mm-hmm. Hustle Nation blog. When did you launch the Side Hustle podcast? 2013. 2013? Wow. And do people, <laughs> so, I can ask you, yeah, people- I'm old. <laughs> no, no, I, you know, I just turned 50. You know, so I, I just launched my podcast in 2019, uh, at the end of 2019. Yeah. Um, and, and again, it was, in, in my, as my squad knows, it was something that I did selfishly because I wanted to, you know, I'm an executive coach and, and whatnot. And I wanted to pick up steps from other people that are helping people, but it just morphed into something more. People like started promoting it and it was just got crazy. Like I do yours, you know? Yeah, so thank you like, for that. The, the podcasting is uh, absolutely phenomenal. And your show, do people apply to come onto your show, Nick? Or is it something you see someone doing something and you reach out to them and say, hey, you want to be a guest? Uh, a combination of both. So I get okay. a ton of inbound you know, PR pitches where typically if the person can afford a PR person, they're not going to be a great fit for the show. Like, you know, oh, uh, so-and-so, you know, New York Times, best-selling author of like, cool, but not necessarily relevant. Um, I do uh, accept a bunch of inbound pitches through sidehustlenation.com slash pitch. If you're a guest, like always on the hunt for, okay. um, you know, interesting, compelling side hustle stories, typically start with the the hook or the angle. Okay, what's the story that we want to tell? What do I, what am I curious about? What do I want to learn more about? And then go find right. somebody doing that thing um, who's wow. going to be a good fit to tell that story. And then, you know, either search in the community, search kind of like, who, who do you know? Like ask for recommendations and uh, try and find interesting people that way. Found a couple of interesting people on Twitter recently, like, including right. at Squeegee God, Johnny Robinson, who's really? like, you know, <laughs> I interviewed him on his last day of college to built this window washing business to $700,000. Wow. Um, it was really, really inspiring. Like, man, I wish I was as 
entrepreneurial as you at that age. I think he's going to go far. Right. So you worked corporate. What did you do? So I was at the uh, bottom rung of the Ford Motor Company ladder, wow. where I would uh, interface with their dealers on the service and parts side of their business. It was, uh, you know, one part sales, one part customer service, one part consulting. And it was, it was cool. Like, I don't know, I had a company car driving around the car, did, uh, the car business is mm-hmm. a fascinating business. Um, I just had no desire to climb the corporate ladder there. Where were you living when you worked for Ford? Uh, first in DC or outside of DC, Northern Virginia, then in Atlanta, then in uh, Northern California. Okay. So their their theory early on, I don't know if they still do this, but their theory at that time was like, we're gonna like you know take these college grads and we're gonna like move them as far away from home as possible, so they'll be like they won't have any friends outside of work, so they'll be like <laughs> super loyal to the company. And so what ended up happening, which was true, like you know, those were the my coworkers or the people mm-hmm. that I hung out with on the weekends, but right, you know, it was a lot of you know, a lot of free time at the apartment, like, okay, well, let's, let's try and build up this shoe thing. That's what I was just going to ask, like what launched that idea into side, side hustle nation? Like, was it, you guys were kind of bored because it sounds to me like I've been to uh, the Google campus and it's like, they do everything they can to keep those people together and creating (laughs) and whatnot. And they just hang out with each other. It also reminds me of the show Silicon Valley, which is like one of my favorite shows where they all just kind of hang out together. Is it just a few of you guys sitting around going, man, this we're so far away from home, you and each other, all we have, and just start to think of things to do on the side? Yeah, I don't know that anybody else was doing that stuff. But, oh, okay. You know, we would, um, you know, we'd hang out at the bar and we'd watch college football. And, yeah. you know, you do that for a few weekends and you're like, okay, this more costs money. a lot of money. This is not great for my health. I don't care about 90% of these games there's got to be a better use of my time. So that's when I started like, you know, doubling down um, on the business, you know, going on long bike rides, um, just trying to, I don't know. It it was, it was cool to hang out and I was, you know, grateful to like get the invite as like the new guy, the new hire, but it was, you know, it it didn't, didn't really serve like the long-term goals. Did you ever go to the glass house in Dearborn, Michigan ever? Or did you do everything remote? Yeah, we did some training out in uh, in Dearborn. We yeah, at the Dearborn Inn. Oh, yeah, um, I, yeah, right there. Yeah, I, I'm I'm from Michigan, so it's like oh, I, nice. I grew up there, and like Ford and GM and Chrysler's in my blood. My dad worked for General Motors for 30 years, so yeah, like, we still got yeah, friends there. out there. Yeah, um, it's okay. I don't know. It's it's a different world. Like they're it, in their own is. little bubble where the imports like don't really exist. <laughs> it's like gotcha. You get off the airport, you're like. Oh, yeah, the market share here compared to the market share everywhere else. I live in South Florida where it's foreign car nation and I mm-hmm. only will drive American. You know, they give me a little bit of crap down here. Be like, dude, go get your Benz. I'm like, no, I got my <laughs> 300 and I got my Mustang. And I am good. You know, because my that that keeps my dad talking to me. <laughs> you know, so which is good. But OK, so you had a corporate job. You're making a living. You're building this side hustle. And when were you able to get to a point to say, you know what, I can do this full time? So for me, I wanted to see a track record of revenue going back six to 12 months that was at least covering my monthly expenses. And maybe track record of revenue is incorrect. Track record of bottom line profit. Like how much Understood. How much are we actually making from this thing? Right. Um, I think a lot of people put the um, pressure on themselves to like, well, I, I need to replace my salary. And it's like, well, that, that that would be great. And it's like really impressive when people can do that while still working full time and they built their side hustle. So it's like, you know, outpaced their day job. And that's when I, that's when I knew it was time to quit. Like, you know, you know, wow. golf clap, like, you know, congratulations. Yeah. Um, but as long as you're living below your means, I think if you're covering your expenses, then, you know, you're at least not going to go backwards, make sure you have a little bit of runway um, saved up safety net, you know, buffer in savings, should anything go wrong. But the reason that I felt comfortable doing that was, you know, because we were living below our means. And I thought with an extra, you know, 50, 60 hours a week to dedicate to the business, sure. I could easily get it to that point and beyond. And, and that's kind of what happened early on. You said we, is there partners? I say we, because I had like an outsourced development team Beautiful. at that point. Okay. Um, but it was, it was mostly it was the collective we, and then eventually hired a, a admin or a kind of a virtual assistant person to right. help out with that too. I do the same thing. <laughs> Absolutely. That's awesome. So when did you have the itch, for lack of a better term, to really roll out getting people interested in having a side hustle? 
Yeah. So this is five years into full-time self-employment sure. uh, for me. So I've been doing the shoe thing for a long time, started a bunch of other projects that, you know, you know, really only one of them had, had worked at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of them or was, you know, showing signs of life. Um, the rest hadn't really worked, but it was kind of at a low point in the shoe business where, you know, you kind of start asking a lot of the same questions that um, I'll turn around and ask side hustle show listeners. Like, you know, what do you never get tired about talking about? What mm. lights you up? What, you know, what do you want to be known for when somebody Googles you? Um, and for me, this idea of deconstructing different business ideas really played into my natural curiosity. i have been running a personal blog at that time that nobody ever read, but some of the most fun <laughs> content that I had created was around that idea of like trying to figure out the business model of uh, restaurant.com or some of these like, you know, penny auction bidding sites that were popular at the time. That's crazy. Um, yeah. Just oh, like, wait a minute, you know, wh- where did the money come from? Like restaurant.com, for example, I think mm-hmm. is still on the first page of Google, like this blog post that I wrote years <laughs> and years ago. Wow. Um, Southwest business select, like a creative upsell that like cost them, you know, basically nothing. Like they, they pour you like a free drink and they, you know, charge you an extra hundred bucks on your ticket. Right. Like it's a fantastic ROI. I loved all of that stuff. Uh-huh. And, you know, pointing the mic at other people uh, for the podcast was a chance to, you know, explore that with other, um, with other entrepreneurs. Like, okay, you don't have to be the end all be all guru on this stuff. Like, okay, you've, mm-hmm. you were able to quit your job. Cool. You've been medium, medium successful. It's not a million dollar business, but sure. you know, it doesn't have to be other people can tell their stories. And that was kind of the, the light that's bulb amazing. moment. And that's Such what, a, uh, that's what really kind of took off more, more, much more so than the written content. It's such a go-giver mentality, man. That, that, that's awesome that you're giving other people a platform. And I love that, you know, you say you, you're not looking for the, the people that have really quote unquote, I did this in air quotes. If you're not watching a video that they, they haven't made it right? They're building and they're actually got there in the trenches. And, I, and I've got to ask you, people that you interview, you don't have to name them, but I'm just curious if you ever used any of the side hustles that you've interviewed in your own life? Yeah, for sure. A lot, like okay. lots of times and early on, okay, that's cool. kind of the thesis of the site. That's uh, awesome. It's like, I'll, um, you know, I'll be the guinea pig. I'll experiment with this stuff. I had all these plans to be, you know, sign up to be a Lyft driver and like report back on how this works. But mm-hmm. early on, I was selling stuff on Fiverr, selling stuff on eBay, Amazon, like inspired by guests, creating a right. Udemy course, like doing the self-publishing thing yeah. which I'd done a little bit of before, but like learning from other people who had done it. Yeah. That was a big part of the, okay. the brand early on, like these little uh, experiments and still is to a certain extent today yes. to report back on what works, but really kind of applying it more so on like the SEO, online business front, uh, email marketing front these days. God, I, I love that. I love it. So when you're, let me see, how, how can I ask this? Let me ask you this. Have you seen the movie Back to the Future? Yeah, a long time ago. But yeah. Okay. Let's get in that DeLorean with Marty McFly. All right. Let's go back to the double deuce, the 22-year-old Nick Loper. What kind of knowledge nuggets, that's what we call them here at Time Shine today, what kind of knowledge nuggets would you be dropping on the 22-year-old Nick, maybe help him level up, last through, and shorten the learning curve just a little bit? I don't know if 22-year-old Nick would have taken my advice. Like he was Me still, neither. Mine. <laughs> he was still pretty smart. I, was right. like, I wish I was half as smart now as I was at 22. Um, <laughs> the, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, the one of the biggest... Um, realizations or revelations was, okay, you don't have to go at it alone. Like somebody else has probably already solved these problems. Like I was very, I was very like heads down, like trying to do my own thing instead of like looking up, looking for answers, trying to figure out maybe who, not how, um, in a lot of ways where it's like, okay, if I could get some mentorship or peer accountability earlier on, I think that would have been really powerful. I didn't discover mastermind groups probably for another 10 years after that. And I think that would have been really helpful to have uh, earlier on. Cause it was like, you know, was still doing side businesses at that time and just, you know, was very, felt very isolated in a way. Bro, that is such a strong knowledge nugget that, you know, I call it getting your asking gear, right? You don't have to be alone. You can go ask and there's people it's called, you know, his story for 
a reason. There's people that have left bread trails of crumbs that can answer your questions. There's actually people still breathing air that can answer your questions. You don't have to be alone. That's amazing, man. That that that. Thank you for saying that. So. How does Nick want his dash remembered? That little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date, your life date and your death date. How does Nick want his dash remembered? Uh, hopefully as a, as a good husband and father and somebody who helped some people uh, start their own businesses and uh, exercise a little bit of uh, financial independence in their lives. That's awesome, man. That, that's fantastic. So what keeps Nick up at night? Oh, gosh, lots of you know, macro uh, <laughs> concerns about yeah. uh, global geopolitical drama and right climate disaster days. and yeah. uh, the increasing polarization in absolutely every category of everything. I don't know how we, I don't know how we dial back that where we could find some middle ground. Because if we zoom out, like we all want the same things. Same like, thing, we want dude. a healthy planet yeah. to live. We want, yeah. you know, a positive future for our kids. Right. So it's like, it just, it boggles my mind how we just have gotten to this point of, yeah, you know, everything it has to be fought over. And it's like, just, yeah. I don't know. It, it's kind of, I'm yeah, right. It, it, it's scary. Like I do lose sleep over it. I, I'm right there with you with regards to the, the macro stuff, like the micro stuff I've had to teach myself through the years and I'm pretty good at the, to shut it down. You know, I'm like, there's nothing I can do about it right now, but the, the macro stuff that, that, that oversees everything. So I only drink out of glass, you know, it's, it's like those, I try to do my part to make sure it's right. And, and without preaching too much, helping other, helping other people along to do their part, but you're right, man. There's, there's so many concerns uh, with where we're at, especially in this day and age in the past 27 months, it's just been I mean, it's been going on a long time before that, but this past yeah. seven months, it's just been out, out, outrageous for, yeah, that's the right term. It's, it, it's been, it's been crazy. So what do you think people then misunderstand the most about Nick? I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty transparent on the, are, <laughs> on the show. Um, like I'll meet people at events and they're kind of like, maybe they're surprised, like how quiet I am in, in real life. Right. Um, because I, you know, I got, I got to get up for the show. What's up? What's up? Nick Loper here. Welcome to the side hustle show. Right. And because it's like, it's audio only, like you, you got to bring some energy and <laughs> right. like, and it's not to say like, I'm not energetic in person, but it's like, right. I'm more just, you know, try and listen in and what right. else is going on. So I'm not always, I don't know. I think people are sometimes surprised. Like you, you, you sound like, just like you do on air, but I get that, but right. then I also get the, um, Oh, you're you're quieter than you are, or you're taller than I expected. Like, right. oh, do I? I sound short. I don't know. <laughs> like, you know it's always fun to meet uh, listeners in real life. It's funny because I could listen to you and hit episode after episode after episode. I couldn't listen to me after, <laughs> and it's not because I don't like hearing my own voice. It's just I'm up, and I'm up all the time. It, it's crazy. I go in. I'm the big Midwestern guy, hugs everybody, and. And that's just me, but like you, you just, you do. And it's, this is a compliment. Don't think anything weird about it. you have this voice that's soothing, that keeps people tuned in. You feel me? So it's like, that is a gift that you have that you were blessed with. And that's just fantastic, man. It's awesome. I mean, I can listen to episode after episode and it's like, it never get boring, but it doesn't feel like I have to be like, like I'm sure people are with my shows, which is fine, but, but I'm just being authentic and I'm being me. You know, I feel like years of years of podcast listening has made me talk faster. I feel like 15 years ago, I had yeah. probably a little slow draw and I was living in Atlanta. So I was picking up like the local, <laughs> the local draw. I'd go home yeah. for Thanksgiving in Seattle. My family would be like, who are you? Um, but I think years of listening to podcasts at like 1.5 or 2X has made me like speak faster. faster. And, and then you ever listen to somebody's show, even if you listen to the side hustle show, if you listen to it at 1X, you'd be like, is this guy asleep? I do the same right. thing with like Pat Flynn. Like, oh my gosh, he sounds so tired. <laughs> if you're used to, if you're used to it at one point seven or something, then uh, everybody's going to sound tired. You know, I run I run the South Florida Podcasters Association down here, right? And there's like 300 members, right? Not about barely. Florida's a hot spot for yeah. for podcasting. Yeah. Jared uh, from Podcast Movement is yeah. there. Yeah, oh yeah, Chris Gustamos. You know, we got Alex San Filippo from Pod Match. I mean, it's it, yeah. it, it's here and. Like I, there's, I think there's probably 150 people in the room and I, and it was like, I'm, well, I'm the president, but I actually was speaking that night and 
I'm like, we're going to listen to an episode of the Side Hustle Nation and I want feedback, right? And all of them said that oh, you gosh. were the most well-spoken and you had the best pauses. Meaning like when you say stuff, you don't ramble. Do you say stuff, you stop. You say stuff, you stop. And that's a gift. Again, I've been interviewing people since 1999, right? You know, on the radio, not just podcasting. Podcasting only been since 19. So I've been interviewing people for 20 years and you That's do you have the best pause in the was business. It, was it intro that you were listening to or like mid-interview? It was, we listened to about 22, 23 minutes of it. Oh, you know, wow. I forget which one it was. I'll have to, I'll, I'll send you which one it was. I'll have to look back in my notes. But this is, <laughs> that's like, yeah. that's like super nerve wracking to have a room full of people. Like it, it, yeah. They Maybe listen to mine, dude. And it's like, shoot, oh man, did I bring it? You know, so it's funny, but we'll just pull it. And it was my turn to pick and, and we listened to one from you and then one from uh, Travis Chappell's uh, podcast, okay. which is fantastic as well. So I worked with a, it's funny that I worked with a podcast coach for a while and, you know, we, we uh, were heavily, you know, working on kind of like the intros, like how can we make this tighter? How can we sell this? How can we make this like choose somebody who's already chosen, chosen to like download this thing, but like, how can we make them tune in, like taking cues from mm. terrestrial radio, like coming up after the break, you know, we're doing it like, right. And he said, the most powerful thing that you have as a host is that dead air is that pause. And so trying to like, trying to slow me down. Cause like, truth be told, almost all of the intros today are, are pre-scripted. And right. so, um, you know, really trying to, you know, within 45 to 60 seconds, like, okay, mm -hmm. what's in it for me? What are you going to learn? You know, here's why this guest is worth paying attention to and just trying to get right into it. And that's yeah. definitely evolved over time, but uh, he was, he was somebody who embraced the uh, dramatic pause. Yeah. And you're good. You're good. I mean, just accept the compliment because you are really good at it. <laughs> well, you're thank you. Really good at it. So let me ask you something. That it, let's take out of this equation, any like anything electronic, no laptops, no books, no phones, no, or no laptops, notebooks, phones, what are three things that Nick can't live without? Um, no electronic things. That's hard to think. That's hard. Right? Like, um, I think humans are almost infinitely adaptable. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's like, well, you know, you, you, you figure out a way. Um, something that um, actually a guest of mine, a friend of mine, former mastermind member of mine, uh, turned me on to were these like um, resistance bands. So mm -hmm. use that. Um, Super lightweight to pack up when you travel yeah. um, to do like resistance training. So those are something that was like 40 bucks or something for right. a set of them. Like it wasn't right. a huge investment. Um, I guess this is electronic, but it's like a, an e-bike that I bought a couple of summers oh, nice. ago. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Good. And it's like, okay, fine. You know, your legs work just fine. It could be, it could be a regular bike, but I mm -hmm. find myself using that for uh, transportation more than recreation like for local awesome. trips yeah i think that's been um that's been really helpful other things 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 um oh <laughs> well, this is kind of a silly one i actually mm -hmm. picked this up from uh, brian harris from um formerly video fruit but now uh Grow yeah. tools i think yeah he he was like just every every facebook post of his for like a month was like about the virtues of stretchy jeans and i was like they they make stretchy jeans for guys and sure enough <laughs> they do and right. they're like by far way more comfortable than more whatever comfortable. old jeans they had. Like mine are. Um, yeah, it's I don't know, yeah. game changer, game changer. If you and haven't I'm, gone on the uh, stretching, you know, women have had these for I don't yeah. know, a decade or two, but yeah. uh, probably longer. But it's like, oh, they're right. actually way more comfortable. And I'm six one, I'm two sixty, and there's jeans that fit me perfectly for the uh, the, the stretchy jeans. They're also my my fiance brought me some. I'm like, eh, and I put them. I'm like, oh my gosh. Felt like yeah, it was wearing pajamas, my... dude. It was yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's, it's so comfortable. <laughs> That's awesome. So, Nick, what is your definition of a life well lived then? A life well lived. You know, being able to uh, have control over your calendar is the biggest thing for me. And that was my biggest pain point with working in corporate America was, you know, having to ask permission to take time off. And my boss was never the guy who, like, said no. It just felt weird to have to ask. So it just... Um, having control of your time is a life well lived. And then having um, the freedom to spend that time in a way that serves you, serves your family, serves others. Love it, man. That, that's awesome. And squad, we're going to take Nick 
Loper, my, my buddy here from Side Hustle Nation, uh, through our leveling up lightning round just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates. Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. We are back, and I got Nick Loper. And Nick, I'm going to hook up with Nick one time. I'm going to talk to him about a few of these questions in person where we can talk 15, 20 minutes. But, Nick, you got five seconds to answer the questions with no explanations. You ready to level up? They can all be answered that way. You ready? Five seconds. Five seconds. They can all be done. Let's rock. Okay. What is the best leveling up advice Nick's ever received? Pay attention to what's working for other people. Yes. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Uh, consistency. Beautiful. You see me walking down the street. You're like, man, Fergie looks like he's a little bit in his doldrums. Other than your books, what book would you hand me? Uh, 4,000 Weeks. Never heard of it. Who's that by? You can expand. Uh, I don't know the author. I um, okay. just read this recently. Okay. The concept is that everyone has 4,000 weeks of life on the average lifespan. And so it really puts it into uh, perspective. Yeah. And what's cool about this is it's not a traditional productivity book that I expected when I picked it up. It's a lot more on the mindset of letting go of the entire like world of possibilities that you want to have on your bucket list. And you see everybody doing on social media. Got it's it. like, no, realistically, you're never going to be able to do that stuff. So enjoy the moment, focus on what's right in front of you. Um, that was helpful for me. Love it. It's like always like, there's never enough time to do all the things. Love it. Donnie, put that in the show notes, please. Thank you. What's your most commonly used emoji when you text? Uh, the laugh crying. Love it. Nicknames growing up? Uh, just Loper or, or <laughs> a friend of mine called me Sponge. So it's a good student in school. Love it, man. Chess or checkers? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Probably Chess is more intellectually or, stimulating, but I'm a I haven't fabric. played either in a long time. <laughs> I, ice cream flavor, go, go to ice cream flavor. Uh, cookie dough. Beautiful. There's a Loper sandwich named after you. What's on the sandwich? Okay, there's no bread on this sandwich. And okay. uh, it's uh, probably just a, a Shake Shack burger. Shake, shake Shack, shake shack lettuce wrap. I dig it, man. <laughs> so you have a time machine. You could either go... 20 years in the future or 20 years in the past, which one are you going? Oh gosh. Um, well, we talked about the future might look kind of scary in 20 years. Um, <laughs> I, I don't want to miss the kids growing up either. Like they're going to be, you know, mid twenties by then. Sure. Uh, so I guess I'd have to go backwards. Beautiful. Beautiful. Favorite charity and organization you like to give your time or money to? Uh, Side Hustle Nation is a 1% for the planet member. So trying to be a better steward of this only home that we all share. Excellent. Love it. Love it. Last question. The best decade in music, 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? 90s. 90s. All right. Love it. Hey, may I ask your age, Nick? <laughs> so I'm, a, I'm a millennial, so it's all 90s. Like, okay. um, uh, you know, there's Pearl Jam. There's, oh, yeah, uh, there's all sorts of good stuff in the 90s. Yeah, I, I grew up with the 80s with the big hair, don't care. I was born in 72, so I was like, as the 80s rolled in, I graduated in 90s, so the 80s yeah, yeah. my jam. But when I went in the military and I was in Iraq and Afghanistan, it was all Nirvana and all the garage bands and the grunge bands. And it was our jam, you know, um, that's awesome. So Nick, how can we find you, my friend? Uh, side hustle nation.com. Um, maybe side hustle nation.com slash ideas is a good place to start. If you're kind of on okay. the sidelines, looking for some creative inspiration there. Okay. Of course, we'd love to have you tune into the side hustle show in your favorite podcast app. We're closing in on 500 episodes of yeah. really inspiring case studies um been there done that entrepreneurs how they got it done love it and tell me a little bit about this book the one thousand dollars 100 ways of people make real money yeah this was a uh, crowdsourced from the side hustle nation community wanted to figure out a way to showcase some of the cool businesses that people uh that readers and listeners were working on and it's broken into um kind of a parallel format where everybody answers the same set of questions. How do you come up with that idea? Um, how do you get your first traction or customers? What um, else has worked to market the business? What, how much did it cost to get started? What mm. mistakes have you made along the way? What did you do differently? And where are you going? What's next? So it kind of follows that. So you can kind of pair, compare um, apples to apples across all the different uh, case studies in there. Wow. And it's 300 pages too. So, I mean, you, you put a lot of information in there, huh? Love it's it. a fun, it's a fun one to, uh, to yeah. create and, and yeah. see some of the surprising stuff that came back. Like, oh, that's really creative. 
I love it. And, and Squad, I'm going to give away not only that book, but probably two of his other books, um, which I'll pick those out. But the first person that puts Side Hustle in any of the comments on any of our social, I'm going to actually purchase the book and hand, send it to Nick. And if Nick, if you don't mind signing it and sending it out, that'd be fantastic. I'll pay for the postage, whatever it needs, but I'll, I'll purchase the book and send it out for him um, to, to Nick. Um, you mind doing that, signing it for us? Yeah, we can make it happen. Awesome. I love it. I love it, man. That's fantastic. And, and squad, we have had just, I mean, Nick's given up, wow, 10 minutes over the time that we had allotted. Um, you know, a guy that was in corporate America didn't really, wasn't really feeling it, had a lot of downtime. So he started setting up these comparison shop sites and he saw, you know, a, a, a way for him to kind of break out from that awesome sauce rat race that he was stuck in. You know, he, he liked to deconstruct business ideas, which when he started to do that, started opening up the creative side of his mind. And then he starts paying it forward by bringing people onto the show that are doing side hustles that in, in earning money, like real money, to help them in possibly even break away from his guests' real work. But like also he passes it on to you with the knowledge nuggets to help you break away as well. You know, he will be remembered. Actually, he, he wants to remind you, don't go it alone. There are people that are there in your present because so many people have a foot in the future, foot in the past, and they pee all over the present. Just pay attention in your present. Get your asking gear. There are people there to help you. You know, he'll be remembered as a good husband, a great teacher that really had a passion for exercising financial independence. You know, and he want, in life well lived to Nick is someone that has controlled the time and with control of the time, have that freedom to spend the time with the people they love, go places they want to be. And it, Nick is just a fantastic human being. He's so well-spoken. His podcast, again, I don't miss an episode. He levels up his health. He levels up his wealth. He's humble, yet he's very hungry for, for better and thriving and helping you thrive. So Nick, thank you so much for coming on the show. I love your guts, brother. I can't wait to meet you in person, hopefully at PodFest here in a couple months, brother. All right, Fergie, thanks so much, man. You bet, chat soon.